According to Thompson Reuters research, law firms continue to lose female talent despite universal recognition of the value of attaining gender diversity and despite making significant success in hiring and retention at the entry and um, mid-levels of the legal profession as well as the senior non-legal professions. But what could be the cause? Um, that's what we want to talk about today and uh, talk about these issues. Welcome to the Women's Series, where we capture developments and stories that impact women. I am Ayomide Ogute. Uh, today, we want to look at some of the factors that impede the performance of female leaders, particularly in the legal profession. We're emphasizing on the legal profession today. And joining me to have this conversation virtually is Aderi Sola Fagwere. Aderi Sola is the Principal partner at the uh, In Black and White LP. Hello, Adere Sola. How are you doing today? Excited to be here to talk about this topic because I'm a champion of female lawyers. So it's a pleasure to talk about something that really resonates with me. That's very well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And um, just like I said earlier, am I allowed to call you my learned colleague or am I, do I qualify as a learned colleague? <laughs> Because you're wearing black and white for today, we'll allow you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'll allow that slide anyway. For the more for the moment, I'll enjoy it. I'll enjoy being for called the, moment, yeah. the learned colleague. Yes, thank you. Uh, let's just go straight into the conversation for today. Um, we seldom ever take um, the performance of women in the legal profession into consideration because we just feel like they have like some level of, I don't know what it's called. But um, are there female leaders and what, are, what, is, what exactly is the ratio of female to male leaders in the legal profession? Let's use Nigeria as a case study. Okay, so um, we cannot um, summarize the legal profession in one whole lump because there are various aspects of law and legal practice. We find very many women doing well as in-house lawyers, but unfortunately, we don't find as many women doing well as litigators and law firm leaders. That's probably because in-house practice allows them to, to, to have some kind of work-life balance. Also, in the judiciary, we have quite a number of female judges. In Lagos State, we have many more female judges, in fact, than male judges. We've had how many female CJs in, CJNs in the past? We've had two. Before this present one, we had three women back to back. Mm -hmm. So women are doing well in spaces where they're allowed to do well. And or they're not not necessarily allowed, but supported because the judiciary allows you because it's your court time. You can decide what time you want to get to court. You can decide what time you want to rise from court. So therefore, you can afford to manage the domestic affairs. Also, in an in-house um, in-house capacity, many um, organizations find that women perform better as in-house counsel, company secretaries, and the like. So you find so many women in banks, in multinationals, being company secretaries. But when we talk about women in litigation and the apex of your litigation career is to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. You don't find too many women doing that because that is the grueling aspect of having late nights. Because if you look at the last list of senior advocates, we had very few women. The year before we had very few women. So that is where we have the challenge. Also, you have women practicing in the academia. We have quite a number of women doing quite well in the academic Demia, but not many of them get to the professorial level. None of, not many of them get to the sanship level because they cannot um, necessarily cope with the rigors of litigation. So we can't generalize it, but we can't talk about this without paying kudos to a number of women who have laid the way and have been good at what they do. So we have had female senior advocates. We have the like of Folake Sholanke SCN, Mama Folake Sholanke SCN, who have laid the tracks for other women. We have younger women like Doris Ford SCN who are doing well as senior advocates so it's 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 we can't generalize we have to look at the areas of legal aspect and um, legal practice within law firm leadership we're seeing a number of law firms embrace female partners. So we have quite, when we look at the big law firms, if you look at them when they have pictures of their partners, you find female lawyers doing well at partner level in-house as law firm, in law firms. So kudos to the law firms that are pushing their women to get to the top. But the issue is when you enter, at the entry level, there are many more female lawyers. Many of them drop by the wayside. And you see some of them saying, oh, I'm going to start a salon. Oh, I'm going to go into fashion designing because it will allow me to have more time for myself. So I think it's about firms and organizations embracing work-life balance and doing as much as possible to ensure that women have that work-life balance that can support them to fly high in their careers. 
I mean, you've been able to highlight uh, quite a number of things, and I love how you've been able to break down the structure, the in-house, the people in lit litigation, and of course, um, partners. Um, I find that very interesting. I mean, hearing that this is what happens. I know that lawyer, female lawyers do well in-house. I mean, we see them as company secretaries, and I mean, you see them in banks and all of these places and all organizations. But when it comes to the profession itself, we do not see much of women. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about the legal practice in terms of litigation practice. You don't see too many, many women get to the top. If we need to overhaul our entire litigation system for us to see more women in litigation practice. Okay. I mean, you've tried to emphasize that, um, what's it called, the challenges also come, when um, the faults is also coming from the woman, being that um, she's not ready for this, um, for the stress that comes with it. But I mean, let's, let's just move on and um, hear from some of these things that might possibly be like the problems or the challenges women face, face in uh, litigation itself. Um, hearing Julia Gilead and um, Ngozi Okonje, well, I was watching them uh, speak at the TED Talk recently. They discussed different variables that hinder a woman's performance, particularly how much time is spent on a woman's appearance and general attire. Now, do you believe that this is an issue that has impact or that has an impact on how well women function in the legal profession as a woman? Okay, so for me, I believe that as a woman, you should look good. Consider your parents. It matters a lot. Even as a man, and especially in the legal profession, I champion it that your image is everything. So I buy the fact that you should look out for your parents, look at how you look. But that doesn't mean you should spend hours dolling up at the expense of time that you should use to prepare for court. If court is nine o'clock, make sure you are there for nine o'clock. It may just mean making up a little more, a little earlier. If you know your male camp counterpart can be ready in 10 minutes, that person can afford to wake up 10 minutes before court if he lives next door to court. But if you have to wake up a few hours earlier, please do just make Make sure you make it on time. Right. Um, so according to what's it called now? I mean, I just had to mention that because that's a, one of the things that women <laughs> that men use against women as sometimes. And yeah, it just feels like it's it's not in our favor. But anyway, that's just one of those things. And definitely it's important that um, women look good and appear appearance is um, goes a long way. But uh, according uh, to Thompson Routers research again, there are um there are a few obstacles, yes. There are a few obstacles to women's growth in legal firms. Um, one is the barrier to progression, poor remuneration, and effective, effective remedial measures. Um, what do you think are, uh, what do you think about these obstacles and how can we get over them? Okay, so the remuneration bit is a topic that we always have as lawyers. We always push that topic because we want our lawyers to be better remunerated. We want law firms to consider their, their associates, senior associate partners as a part of the holistic package and be sure that they can have good remuneration. So we cannot say that that is not a problem. And um, that has been a challenge to legal practice. Many people, like internationally, even at the IBA level, because I sit on a committee of the International Bar Association, lawyers in general are pulling out of the profession because they're looking out for other professions that are more lucrative. So I think it generally needs, means that we have to look for better ways to practice the law to make sure that we make more money. So in terms of remuneration, that is a challenge. I wouldn't say that work-life balance is in the challenge is absolutely important. In terms of, because some law firms have to make, law firms necessarily have to make deliberate efforts to ensure that they support women men so that at the point in time where you're looking at your partners you actually have female partners there so you need to do all you can to make sure that at the end of the day when they look at your partnership scheme you see that there's a women there are women there so yeah. that's really important there needs to be a conscious effort made yeah i definitely agree with that that there needs to be a conscious effort made on the part of the women as well and also on the part of the government so on the part of regulators in terms of this poor enumeration and flexible work environment i think everyone is going through the flexible work environment because i for one would love a flexible work environment as well so it's not only for lawyers i think it cuts across um, yeah. <laughs> yes it definitely yeah, cuts exactly it definitely out. cuts across so we all want flexible work environment and i hope that regulators are people in charge will definitely do something about it. So I attended um, Women in Profession, um, the Nigerian chapter launched recently that um, happened, yeah, it happened recently. And one of the resolutions that was proposed while recognizing the difficulties 
faced by women in the workforce was an extension of maternity leave from three months to six months. I find that very interesting. Do you support this resolution? And how do you believe it will help women work more effectively in the legal profession? Um, it's a laudable idea. As a woman, I embrace it wholeheartedly. But as an employer, <laughs> I'm asking myself, can law firms, in all honesty, can all law firms, whether we're talking about big law firms, whether we're talking about small law firms, whether we're talking about medium law firms, can they afford to pay a woman six months off to stay at home? Not exactly. So we need to strike a balance. You can go for three months, crash, if there's space for that, so that we know that your child can be safe and be at home can be with you but yes a better environment with you secondly you could also have situations where if you give somebody three months that make up the six months you could have the person close at two o'clock and then do most of the work from home or 12 o'clock and do the rest of the work at home the most important thing is that people are productive and we have to look for ingenious methods to ensure that people are productive and they are happy at work so the honest truth is that small law firms may not be able to pay a woman six months to stay at home and that's why you find some people say oh once they, they see they're hiring a woman who is in her productive years they run away from it because they're like that means we're going to be paying you for some six months to just stay at home so we need to look at other methods it can be an across board the big law firms may be able to do that but the medium and small law firms may have difficulty with paying people for six months to stay at home with the children right i definitely agree with you it could um, definitely comes with an agreement and then striking a balance such that it's a win-win situation for both the employee win-win situation for all, yeah both parties. Um, let's finally, I just want to get your opinion on how women can do better in the legal profession, such that the the profession um, um, they love their what they do and they don't digress into something else. Because we see a lot of people digressing into something else just because of poor remuneration. But then again, how do we uphold the profession? How can women do better, in your opinion? I mean, over the course of your experience as a lawyer. Okay, so first things first. I always say I don't have any objection if anybody leaves the profession especially if you're not happy doing what you're doing because the legal profession is not a profession where you're coming and you're, you're, you have double minds about you you're not exactly fulfilled you're not exactly happy so if you know you feel much more fulfilled cutting fabrics and drawing out patterns but crying out loud please go ahead and cut your fabrics and draw patterns but if you are driven by legal practice the first thing i'll say is look at the area of legal practice that works for you because fortunately as the world is developing there are various aspects of the law the legal profession runs, runs across board there's law profession for the elderly geriatric law the sports law there's fashion law there's entertainment law there's property law it's diverse so even in your in your understanding of the law the fact that you want to practice law look for what works for you and makes you happy that you can open a document or work on something for several hours and you wouldn't be upset about it that is very important secondly for female thirdly for female lawyers i always say the mere fact they're gentlemen in the profession they're not females in the profession so i tell people your male counterpart is no but in no way better than you just because he's male and you are female. It is important for people to find what they are interested in and do it. And also, there are no. It is not. A, you're not. A, you're not a fighting or competing with the male counterparts. You are both a gentleman in the profession. And it's quite interesting to note that. And mentorship. It is very important that we take mentorship very seriously across all cadres. I mean, it is not only doesn't only apply to legal profession, but for everybody, it's important that we take um, mentorship very very seriously. That's the only way we can grow because some some people have gone ahead of us to do what we want to do so definitely somebody has to put us in that part so that we do not make mistakes thank you Adair Insola for being our guest today it was great speaking with you thank you so much for having me and have a lovely lovely day enjoy the rest of your day you're welcome thank you very much and that will be all on today's episode of the Women's Series. Do connect with us on all our social media platforms and let's keep the conversation going on what and how women can do better in the legal profession. And those are showing on the screen. And to watch more of our videos, log on to www.proshare.co. And um, if you'd like to reach out to me as well, you can send the mail to womenseries at proshare.co. Until next week, I am Ayomili Ogunte. Thank you for watching.